So I was going to record a video today all about how to use synthetic monitoring to debug page speed issues on your website. But then I saw one particular page speed regression that I thought deserved its own video. If you look at this chart, we can see that on about the 20th of March, there was a big change in the LCP score of this website. And there are two initial clues that tell us about what might have happened that led up to the large contentful paint increase. One is we can see that the first contentful paint goes up, and at the same time, there's another big change on the website in the page weight. So that might mean that a lot more data is being loaded now, delaying when the large contentful paint is ready to render. However, if we expand the LCP section and enable a comparison between the two test results, we can see that that is not actually the main change that happened between these two test results. Actually, the biggest change that happened is that before the LCP element was this H1 tag, whereas now it has shifted to be this image. Seeing these changes in the LCP element is not unusual. Often there's a change in a font size or some other small design change that changes the size of different page elements and as a result, the largest page element changes as well. And that in turn impacts the largest contentful paint metric. So that's what I thought is happening here as well, especially I can see this product hunt badge appearing and I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe this background image is now a little bit bigger and now it's bigger than the um, H1 and that's why we see this change. But actually I end up, up measuring and the two images are the same before and after. So there is no size change in the image and there isn't a size change in the text either. So that's really interesting. And if I scroll down a bit, I can scroll all the way to the LCP development section. So that tells me at different points during the rendering process, what was the LCP element. So before this change, we can see that at first, uh, the browser identified this you know, data SVG URL as the LCP image. So that took 7,260 square pixels. Um, but then eventually that was replaced about a second later by the H1. Whereas now we have this uh, product hunt image, which makes sense, we can see that has been added. But then actually after that, this kite image in the background is identified as the LCP image. And what's really interesting is that the kite image is actually much larger in pixels um, than the H1. So what I was wondering is like, why isn't this kite image identified right away uh, in the previous test result? Because the kite is always showing um, even before this new test. So I looked a bit more into this image, which is now the LCP image. And if I look at this, you can see that I actually changed a little bit. So before we had this D26 um, hash, whereas now we have this 52A hash. So the image is a little bit different. And we can also see that there is a tiny size change between the two. However, if I open the screenshots between these two images, it doesn't really seem like anything uh, really changed between them. So if I switch between these two tabs that I have open now, we can see that the image is slightly different, but fundamentally it is not a different size. So it should still be recognized as the LCP image, even in the original test result. Now I tried to look at these two images in a bit more detail and I can look at the body here, but you can see that the previous image has actually been removed from the website. So I can't look at it anymore. So what I did is I went to the Wayback machine and entered the kitemaker.co website. And then I'm interested in going back to March, 2023. So the last one before that date is in February. And then I can open this and I'm able to then view and look at the image in a bit more detail. So now I can inspect this page and look for the actual image. So I can open this one and then I just open the current live site and I can also identify the background image on there. It seems, it seems like they've made a few more design changes since then, uh, but the image is still the same. Now if I switch between these two tabs, it's a bit more clear. So we go from these dashed gray lines to these more solid gray lines, but nothing really changed about the size of the image. So to learn a bit more about this, I ended up setting up a test page in Glitch. And you can see here, I have the current production image. And if I go to the rendered page and I open inspect and I find some way to look at the performance um, tab and the LCP image. So we can see this is what is identified as the LCP image right now. Now we go to the code, we comment out this new image and put in the old image hosted on web archive and that's which. So now we can see that Chrome is identifying a different page element as the largest contentful paint element. Now it's reporting that the div is the largest element, even though it is much smaller than the image. To understand why the LCP element has changed, 
we need to understand what the Lattice Contentful pane measures. So it's pretty clear that the image is the Lattice element on the page. It is also pretty clear that it is being painted on the screen. But the question is, is this image actually contentful? And if we look at Google's documentation on the Lattice Contentful pane metric, we can look at what elements Google actually considers for the LCP. It tells us that certain elements are excluded because they are not contentful. And one of the items listed here are images with low entropy that likely don't reflect the true content of the page. So what does content look like in our example? Uh, the first image before the design change, this is not content. But now that we move to the new design and the lines are no longer dashed, this is now content for the SCP metric. So this ultimately explains a big part of the performance regression that we see in our example. It isn't a big content change, but the image changes just enough to go from not being content to being content. And as a result, instead of just having to wait for the text to appear on the page to trigger the LCP, we now have to wait all the way for the image to load, which is going to take a bit longer. One fun side note about how the LCP metric works, you might notice that I put this div in here with the letter A in it. If I go back to Glitch and I remove that, let's take a look at what actually shows up as the LCP. So I'm going to reload this, and you can see there is actually no LCP element at all. Uh, if I use a tool like the debug by site speed extension, I can log the page speed metrics for this website. And you can see we do have a first contentful paint. So there is content, it is being painted, but no element counts as large contentful paint. So the way that FCP and LCP look at what contentful means is ever so slightly different. So I thought I was done here, but then Threaton Deutschev on LinkedIn mentioned that I should look at the LCP element in Firefox as well. So let me just inspect that page in Firefox, and I'm going to use the JavaScript API to log the LCP element, and then I'm going to hover over it, and you can see that Firefox thinks that this logo in the top left is actually the LCP image. So it's not the heading, it's not the image we've been looking at, but something completely different. So what's causing this element to be identified as the LCP rather than the other two elements? If we reload the page, we can see that certain elements just kind of fade in gradually in instead of being visible right away. So if I inspect the heading, for example, you can see it starts with an opacity zero and then gradually animates to the final opacity value that it ends up with. And by the looks of it, that means that Firefox does not consider the heading an LCP candidate at all. So just to confirm that, I made another quick example um, where I just have a simple H1. I check what the LCP image is. It is this P tag below it. Uh, and I look at the hello, and you can see that I've set up this like fade in animation for it um, that causes the opacity to start at zero. Now, the way this is treated in Chrome is again slightly different. So I'm going to look at the metrics, and you can see that the LCP entry, this time it is the H1. But actually, I'm quite surprised because the LCP score isn't actually that bad. What I was expecting Chrome to do is to record the LCP only when the animation is complete. Uh, and I wrote an article about this a while ago showing that when you have a fade in animation like this, the largest content of a pane milestone is only recorded when the animation is complete. So either I got something wrong at the time or something changed. And if you want to see if the definition of a performance metric has changed, uh, you can look at the change log for that metric. So here we can see different changes that have happened, that have been made to the large contentful paint met metric over time. Um, so I can look at Chrome 86. That's kind of when Chrome started ignoring paints with opacity zero. Before that, if you had an invisible element, it counted just as much as visible element. But I can't find any changes related to animations in here. So it might be that either there has been a change in how this works, or there's a certain edge case um, that I didn't consider before. OK, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, we saw that the entropy of an image actually determines whether Chrome counts it as contentful or not contentful. Then we looked at, at Firefox and saw that Firefox never considers elements uh, contentful if they start out with the opacity animation. And then finally, we looked at opacity animations in Chrome and saw that Chrome does seem to recognize animated elements um, as painted.